Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be going over seven heroes that are absolutely broken in Dire Tide. And I selected most of these heroes that are on this list from the comments of the last video. So these are heroes that you guys also think are broken that you've been testing, and I picked out a couple that gave really, really good reasons for why these heroes are absolutely unstoppable. Probably thought I was gonna say broken there, I didn't. I pranked you. And if I did prank you, smash the like button and subscribe. And now let's get into it. Seven heroes that are broken in Dire Tide. And by the way, guys, if you want more Dire Tide content now, right? You want it now. You don't want to wait for tomorrow's video. I recommend you sign up to the Game League website. I recently just made a video talking about how to run Drow Strats in uh, Dire Tide. And so if you're interested in that, click the link down below. It's going to teach you a lot. And I hope to see you there. Now let's get into the video. All right, so the first hero on the list is the very dynamic Snapfire. Snapfire does it all. This hero is extremely good at clearing up the waves to build up early candies. It does a lot of right click damage. It scales well because of its talent, similar to regular Dota. Of course, it's after all just regular Dota. And it just has so much utility. Really, Snapfire, in my opinion, is just one of those heroes that you pick right off the bat and it's just good. No matter what the enemy team picks, it's always good. It can't really be countered. It's just a hero with a nuke, a long range ultimate that uh, just does way too much damage. And by the way, this hero can build however you need it to. Do you need a tank that builds Guardian, Greaves, and Vlads and Pipe? Snapfire can do it. Do you need a hero that scales and builds right click and carries her team to victory? Well, she can do that as well by buying Daedalus and so on. Also, the last thing to note is apparently unless they've been fixing a lot of things, guys, so you're gonna always have to check. But Gobble Up can actually deny large creeps. And why this is useful, why, like, why would you wanna deny them? The reason is because you can get the candy, so you can eat up the large creeps, the biggest ones, the ones with 3,000, 4,000 HP, deny them, and just get the candy for yourself. And it's a great strategy just to cheese out a couple more candies. Next up on the list at number two is Sniper. Honestly, what I've come to realize in Dire Tide is that a lot of these long range heroes are particularly good. Now, can they be countered? Of course, just like in regular Dota, if you have a Clockwork or a Spirit Breaker, you can really get on top of them and mess with them. But I would say more often than not, in Dire Tide, people aren't really looking to counter pick. They're not looking to make Sniper have a miserable game. And very similar to your average pub, Sniper just doesn't get focused because it's hard to focus Sniper, you have to run through his entire team. And so he kind of gets away with whatever he wants. Also, Shrapnel is way too good. There are so many points of contention in Dire Tide, and having an ability like Shrapnel on a low cooldown is broken. For instance, the Scarecrows. When you want to contest a Scarecrow against Sniper, you have to run through piles of Shrapnel and man up in it. It's not like you can run away, because then they get the Scarecrow for free. And that's not too good for you. And so all in all, Sniper's just too versatile. This hero does, once again, whatever you need. And that's why I want to put him and Snapfire at the top. I think these heroes are just very flexible and useful no matter what the game is in Dire Tide. And so definitely consider picking them up. And finally, for the ranged heroes list, I know I didn't want to give too many because I could have said Medusa and blah, 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 and all these ranged heroes that kind of just work out in my opinion. But one that is definitely very, very, very strong and very strong with Sniper and with Snapfire is Drow Ranger. And I'm sure a lot of you guys expected this hero to be on the list. After all, multi-shot clears the waves. So you have some wave clear, very nice. Very useful to have that in Dire Tide. And you have the ability to fight non-stop. You don't respawn for what, longer than 30, 40 seconds in Dire Tide? I think the longest is what, 40, 50 if you've bought back? And so if you have long cooldowns, you're already at a massive disadvantage. That's why I'm really not a huge fan of heroes like Enigma and Tidehunter and other long CD heroes. It's because a third of the time or two thirds of the time, you just don't have an ultimate. And it's really awkward. It's really, really awkward because you're always fighting, right? At least in the current state of Dire Tide where people don't really know what they're doing or exactly what the plan should be, you're always fighting and that will probably stay true for a while. And so Drow team comps and heroes like Sniper and Snapfire, heroes that don't have long cooldowns besides Snapfire's ultimate, which isn't even that long, you can just keep fighting. You never run out of damage. Ever. Also, you're really good at taking the buildings. One of the hardest things to do in Dire Tide or in Dota in general is just going for objectives, but Drow is really good at that. She sieges the buildings from very far away. She can even poke away the candies from the enemy team's base, right, their pumpkin, later on into the game with ease. And yeah, I, I really do feel like Drow and Drow comps in Dire Tide just 
stomp. If they get ahead, they stomp, stomp. It is miserable to play against. Next up on the list is Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman's kind of weird. I feel like his ultimate is just cheesy. A lot of people were saying in the comments, and there was a lot. Like, there's a lot of like, Shaman, 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 and it makes sense. I would say the only downside to Shaman that is that it can be pretty hard to get off a of good Shackles in Dire Tide. Possible, of course, of course. But it can be hard, you know, there's a lot of contention going around, there's a lot of weird stuff. But what I recommend you do, at least early on into the game, is Shaman is really consider playing him as somewhat of a roamer. Uh, often what happens in Dire Tide is that you see a 1 and 4 setup, so there's like 4 heroes on the bottom side of the map. That's where everyone likes to go, for the most part. So there's 4 heroes on the bottom side of the map, and then 1 on each team on the top side. And if you gank the top side hero as Shaman, it's quite easy and effective. And so I, I definitely would keep that in mind when I'm playing Shaman in the future. Then the second and the cheesier part of Shaman is snake trapping the enemy team's pumpkin. The, the, the candies in the back. Honestly, is that even the official name pumpkin? You guys could tell me in the comments. But all in all, you just snake the base and it just kills all the pumpkins. It's very similar to Windranger, who is actually next up on the list, but... You know, I don't know why certain things can focus it. I feel like they shouldn't be able to, and maybe it's something that uh, Valve is going to change. Maybe they just feel like you have to protect it and pay more attention to it. I guess that's the idea. But if you refresh from Shaman and you build an Axe, you kind of just easily, easily steal all of the candies. And that's about it. That's kind of all you need to know for Shadow Shaman. Then we have Windranger, as I mentioned a second ago. Windranger is kind of just, I don't know, I think she's definitely one of the best in this mode. For sure. The hero's just so annoying. It's so annoying. Like, it kills your buildings. It kills Scarecrow really easily. It kills your buildings. It kills the major giants, the major bosses very easily if she wants to. It solo kills heroes on, what, a 30 second cooldown when she's level 18, so she scales extremely well. All she needs is a javelin to solo kill people. She clears the waves. Shackle shot is pretty easy to land. I mean, there, there's trees literally everywhere and people are clumped up. It's pretty hard to mess up the shackle shot in that environment. So what does Wynn not do? She also can, as I said, focus fire the, the pumpkin. That's what I'm calling it. Like, she does it all. She really does do it all. And she's hard to kill, which is a huge benefit on a low cooldown, right? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've seen Wind Rangers losing. I personally have not. I feel like this hero just, as I said, does it all, is versatile, miserable to play against, kills whatever she wants, heroes, buildings, creeps, doesn't really matter. Good early on into the game, easy to last hit with, and because she's fast, unlike the rest of the heroes on the list, right? Shaman, Drow, Sniper, Snapfire, they're all slow, but Wind Ranger is really, really fast, and she can bring the candies back to the base so she can secure them easily with her nukes and good autos, and then bring them back to the base in a jiffy. And so, yeah, just pick wind. Next up on the list, we have Zeus. And really, I'm not going to overcomplicate this. I, I would say that Zeus can be good to snipe some candies. Like, if someone's low HP and they're running back to base, you can ulti them. Because, you know, the candies reduce HP, right? So when you chuck a bunch of candies to your Wind Ranger and she's carrying 25, 30 candies and has 300 max HP and 150 current HP, well, Zeus can snipe them and steal the candies. Or someone else can steal the candies. Or, or at least you can delay the push, right? Let's say there's 10 seconds left on the clock. The enemy weaver is going back to the base. He's got to deliver the candies. He's got 150 HP remaining. What can he do? So salty now. <laughs> you guys get the point though, right? So you can snipe out the candies at the last possible second. It's actually quite reliable. It's very similar to Sunstrike as well, which is why I think people uh, definitely enjoy playing Invoker. I also saw this weird cataclysm thing at the beginning of the round. I don't know. Maybe you guys know what I'm talking about. But other than that, other than the whole like cheese snipey thing, it's just Zeus. Like very similar to Sniper. Very, very similar to Sniper. Hard to fight into Zeus. If you go for the Scarecrow, he builds an Aether, spams you out. Hard to go on him because, you know, there's just not a lot of points that you can flank. It's kind of difficult to flank. And so he just gets away with whatever he wants. And finally, last up on the list, coming in at number seven, is Undying. Yeah, I mean, is it really confusing why this hero is good? It's kind of why Undying is good in a lot of these, like, small map game modes. If you guys know what uh, Pog, Path of Guardians, Similar to that, very simple, simple idea. It's easy to decay. It's easy to get multi-man decays because people are clumped. Tombstone, unbelievably useful for the major points of contention. Scarecrows, well, Tombstone's cooldown basically aligns exactly with the spawn timer of Scarecrows. Very convenient. Also, at the beginning of the round, there's a lot of high grounds that you can put Tombstones down on to just win the fight, right? There's a lot, and I mean a lot of high grounds, that are great for Tombstone. And of course, 
soul rip. There's a lot of creeps. You're always going to get a big soul rip off. So I highly recommend maxing out soul rip. I know people have been maxing out the K. They're like, oh, but I can spam the K and it is good. It's useful. And I know there's people maxing out tombstone because it is very strong. And that's the thing. Whenever you want to max out all your spells, it kind of shows that the hero is strong or has the potential to be strong. I'm a much bigger fan of getting soul rip down to that six second cooldown where you can just spam it over and over and over again. It also provides really good sustain for your teammates. People can lack sustain in Pog, right? The, the, you know, you can buy a regen, but it's very awkward. You don't get as much gold as you would usually expect. And, and so having that sustain from the soul rip is unbelievably useful. So yeah, Undying, kind of just good. It also works very well with a lot of the other broken heroes on this list. Undying in Zeus, great. Undying Frontlines for him, saves him. Undying Winter Ranger, yep, he can bait for her. Drow, Sniper, Snapfire, all of the same thing. Also, you can gobble up and chuck that Undying in, and it's going to be very, very powerful. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe, and of course, sign up to the Game Leap website absolutely immediately. As I said earlier, more POG content over there for at least the next few days next week however long we'll see maybe if you guys enjoy it we'll keep it going for a while and i hope to see you there peace before you leave just want to say a quick message if you're trying to get better at dodo or you just enjoyed that video uh, i know this is pretty general and you're gonna hear this quite a bit from me but i recommend you sign up to gamelink.com why because i put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort i do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.